We're one of the rare finds that you want a, a college that is small and nimble. You want a college that is academically rigorous. You want a college that is doctrinally strong. You can't come to faith and not grow. Because every day at chapel, in your classes, we're learning about the Bible, learning about God every day. Think of all the different schools that are out there. There's over 6,000 colleges in the country. 4,000 private schools, I think, is the, the latest number, and all trying to brand and promote, hey, come here for this program or that. But every school, for the most part, has a lot of very similar programs. But I think what makes faith unique is the people. When uh, graduates bring their kids back, it shows the confidence they have in the school, because where they got their education, they want to have their kids come here too. For 100 years, Faith Baptist Bible College has prepared young men and women to take the word to the world. A century of ministry is a milestone achieved by precious few Bible colleges in America. How did we get here? What is there in the foundations of this institution that has enabled it to stand the test of time? Well, it all started with a vision, the vision of our founder, Dr. William H. Jordan. William Jordan was born in Vinton, Iowa on March 18, 1866. After graduating from Coe College in 1891, Dr. Jordan enrolled at McCormick Theological Seminary in Chicago, Illinois, where he continued his training in God's Word. It was in Chicago that God planted the seeds in Dr. Jordan's heart for what is now Faith Baptist Bible College and Theological Seminary. He was visiting the Chicago World's Fair in 1893 when he heard D.L. Moody preach. Moody had recently established his Bible Institute. Dr. Jordan's heart was stirred to one day open a Bible training school of his own. God called him to begin his ministry in Morrison, Iowa, a small town 25 miles to the southwest of Waterloo. That was May 1st, 1894. One month later, he married Phoebe M. Martin. Dr. Jordan served as pastor and evangelist in several other locations in Iowa and Illinois before his family settled at Shenandoah Presbyterian Church in Shenandoah, Iowa. It was there, as a pastor of a church of 33 people, that his wife passed away August 29, 1918. Following the death of his wife, Dr. Jordan moved to Omaha, Nebraska with intentions of fulfilling his lifelong goal to begin a Bible institute. After experimenting with summer school classes to gauge interest, Dr. Jordan took a leap of faith and opened Omaha Bible Institute in the fall of 1921. The first official day of classes was September 28th at 8.40 a.m. Facilities were limited, funds were scarce, faculty was difficult to secure and retain. Still, Dr. Jordan remained faithful. Encouragement came in 1928 with the first major donation to the school. The gift came from the widow of Maytag Corporation founder, Frederick Maytag. Maytag had started in Newton, Iowa, what became the world-famous washing machine company. Mrs. Dina Maytag gave $10,000 to help purchase the college's first campus at 1040 Park Avenue in Omaha. By 1941, the school was turning 20 years old and enrollment had climbed to 50 students, seven in day classes and 43 in night school. But now at the age of 76, Dr. Jordan knew he was at the end of his presidency and the future of the school was once again uncertain. In 1942, he resigned from the presidency, but he remained on the board of directors for another 10 years. On December 16, 1955, Dr. Jordan passed away at the age of 89. Enrollment that year was 131 students. He had given his entire life to ministry, the last 30 plus years of it to fulfilling his vision of starting a Bible Institute. 12 years after his death, the school ran out of space in Omaha and the decision was made to move the campus to Ankeny, Iowa. A collection of pastors and a respected builder presented a convincing plea to move the campus closer to its greatest constituency of supporting churches. Since 1967, the campus and facilities in Ankeny have grown 
academic programs have expanded, and a seminary now offers graduate training in theology. In its 100 years, the name of the school has changed from Omaha Bible Institute to Omaha Baptist Bible Institute to Omaha Baptist Bible College to Faith Baptist Bible College and now Faith Baptist Bible College and Theological Seminary. But the school's mission has remained true to Dr. Jordan's original vision of preparing young men and women for a life of ministry with the Bible as its true foundation. The sustaining of that vision has required great faith over multiple generations. Faith that God would provide in ways that can only be explained as God's provision. I've seen God provide for faith in some pretty miraculous ways. I, I've had the opportunity of serving on the board for a number of years and it's been neat that each time it seemed like the finances were really tight and that it didn't seem like there would be enough to end the fiscal year. God has always miraculously provided gifts that, that just fit the need in a wonderful way. So he's provided uh, really miraculously in that way. He's also provided in terms of the students. Every new year, faith is dependent upon God to bring new students to the school. And it's just been neat over the years to see the, see the quality of students that God has provided. I've seen God provide students. I've seen God provide finances. Um, I've seen God provide facilities uh, in ways that most people would find very unusual. Um, God's timing isn't ours, but um, it's the best. Um, when things seem down, all of a sudden God seems to provide. Uh, he's got his hand on this place and you can't deny that. What would Dr. Jordan think about his once fledgling institution after 100 years? What did his vision accomplish? What impact have the graduates of the school he started had on their world? What legacy did he leave? When I think of Faith Baptist Bible College and the legacy that's here after 100 years, there's a word that comes to mind and it is steadfastness. And uh, the school has remained steadfast in its commitment to essential truth, to the gospel of Jesus Christ, and to its mission of equipping men and women to serve the Lord with their lives all over the world. And that has not changed, and the school has remained steadfast to that. You look at the number of full-time Christian servants, whether uh, faith has extended itself to the world through missionaries, through teachers, through pastors, certainly through youth pastors, through lay people such as myself uh, who have secular vocations but yet are grounded, have been grounded in the word from their time spent here at Faith. I think Faith's legacy is our alumni. Um, I, I really do believe eternity is different because of what God has done in and through the lives of our alumni. And as they have taken the word to the world, uh, there's so many people that have gotten saved through the ministry of our alumni. So I think the greatest legacy is the people that are in heaven because of what God has done in and through people who graduated from faith. When I think of legacy, I think of what one generation gives to another generation. And what faith has given to, to future generations is fidelity to the word of God. Fidelity in terms of what they believe about the inspiration and the inerrancy and the sufficiency of scriptures. I think faith's legacy is related to the very name that they chose when they moved here, and that's the word faith. When I think about Faith Baptist Bible College, I think about a phrase that was used in the Old Testament, mentioned three times in the New Testament, and it is out of Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, the just shall live by faith. And so really it encapsulates what for a hundred years we have seen people that as they've come, we've helped them with being the just and we've helped them learning how to live. And actually out of that living in that short period of time we have here with them, they've learned to live by faith. And I think the legacy of faith is actually helping people live by faith. You know, I hope, I honestly hope that faith is making a difference for eternity. 
And um, one of the greatest days we had in Seminary Chapel was a few years ago. We had a pastor, a German pastor, come back and gave a sermon. And he basically opened up his sermon by saying, thank you for training the missionaries who came over and trained me. I was led to the Lord and discipled and trained by faith grads. And so that's the kind of thing that I'm looking forward to is that we'll have to wait to get to, to heaven to find these things out and, and get to eternity. But um, how many pastors have we trained? How many missionaries have we trained? How many Christian workers have we trained that have gone out and taught the Word of God, shared the gospel, and made a difference in people's lives? As faith celebrates its 100th anniversary in 2021, Dr. Jordan's original vision to train young men and women for a lifetime of Christian service lives on. So very much has changed over the last 100 years. But Dr. Jordan would be thankful to know our mission has not wavered. His vision remains fulfilled. Faith Baptist Bible College and Theological Seminary is poised for another 100 years or until the Lord returns. By God's grace and with His blessing, the school will continue to send its graduates with the word to the world. I would say, I hope that 100 years from now, we still, I would say that we are adapting, uh, that we're current, but we're still conservative, uh, that what we believe doctrinally will not change 100 years from now, and that 100 years from now, we're still producing graduates that are God-focused, eternity-minded, servant-hearted leaders, uh, students who really love people. Faith Turning 100 is a phenomenal mark. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really a tribute to God's glory. I'd like to say congratulations for a hundred years uh, to faith because very few organizations, hardly uh, many nations in this world reach 100 years. So for an institution that didn't have aspirations to be a centennial institution, to still be thriving after 100 years with all the ups and downs, amazing. As I think about faith turning 100, you know, there are two things that come to mind. One is the rich heritage, this wonderful heritage that faith has. And then on the flip side, the exciting future, that, that faith is forward thinking and that faith is growing and faith is thriving. And, and faith is thriving not just numerically, that's a good thing, but faith is thriving spiritually. You, you, can, you can sense it. You walk on campus and there's just this passion for God that is really from the top down in terms of the president's example, the, the, the way chapel ministry is going, um, the heart of the students, you interact with them. And, and that just thrills me to, to know that God is, is really raising up a new generation of students that want to fulfill that motto of taking the word to the world. I, it's my prayer, it's my hope that faith will be able to kind of stay until the rapture, until Christ comes back, to be faithful, to continue to train people to go out into gospel ministry. Faith Baptist Bible College in its hundred years is such a rare opportunity and I'm glad we can celebrate it. You know, you look at the country and, the, and our memorials, they were put up for reasons. Go to Washington because we as well are trying to memorialize this and really become a launching pad for us to move us forward. I don't think it's going to be another hundred years. I think Jesus is coming back. But boy, till he does, we want to be found faithful.